Aloha, this is a video tutorial by Kevin Kimball of Brigham Young University, Hawaii. This video tutorial focuses on helping you understand the concepts taught in the original article titled Double Teaming in Excel by Judith K. Welch, Lois S. Mahoney, and Dan Brickner. This was published in the Journal of Accountancy in November of 2005. In that article, the following Excel 2007 functions were taught. They also exist in the 2003 Excel version. VLOOKUP, MATCH, IS NOT APPLICABLE, and the IF-THEN statement. These will be combined into a very large formula that helps do some very powerful things in, in this example, a depreciation schedule. So the authors use this depreciation schedule. The basic idea is that you've got uh, some assets that are five-year class assets based on the makers tables in the tax um, law. And uh, depending on the age, you would apply a certain depreciation rate. So some people who don't know how to use Excel would then say, OK, well, this is a six-year age. They'd go over and find this, and they would manually type in 5.76. Then you go over here, and they look up seven years, and they'd manually type in zero. Well, you can imagine that's prone to errors, and also uh, it's very time-consuming, tedious work. And imagine if you have 10,000 assets, uh, that would take quite a while. So uh, a very powerful feature in Excel is the VLOOKUP function. And so we're going to use that. We will type equals VLOOKUP, V standing for vertical, because the table over here that we're going to look up in is vertically um, created. Uh, if it were horizontally created, where you had the age 1, 2, 3, 4, and the percentage just below it, that would be an H lookup. Okay, so we've got a uh, V lookup. Well, what do we want to look up? Well, as you saw manually, we looked up the age. Okay, so we're going to look up the age for this particular asset. We leave this as a relative reference because we'll be copying it down so then it refers to F5 and then F6. And what are we going to look up? Well, we're going to look up in this table array. Now, the authors include the titles in that table array. I normally don't do that. I usually go down here, but I will follow the author's example and include the titles. Now, since this is going to be copied down, but I always want to refer to this range, you might want to put your cursor on A3 and hit the F4 button. That makes it an absolute reference. And on the B10, make that an absolute reference. Okay, so now we've got the range that we'll be finding the lookup value in. Let me put a comma, and the question is, well, what value do you want returned? In other words, what do you want to have typed in this I column? Well, I want the second column of this array to be typed. So if I find 6 as the age, I want to return the 5.76. Now that I have that, um, I need to tell it, okay, well, which column is it? Well, it's not the first column, because that's the age. I want returned what's in the second column. So I put 2. So I manually type that in. The next thing is, do you want this to be an exact match, or do you want to be a, an approximate match? Exact match means you want to find exactly age of 6. And if you don't find age of 6, don't give me 5.76. If we're an approximate match, that could be like, if it were a 6.3, then you'd still get 5.76. So it's an approximate. Uh, this is what you might, be use, uh, might use in computing grades in a class, where it's not exactly the cutoff of 93% for an A, but it's 93.4, and they would still get an A. In this case, we want an exact match. And so I just click on that, we'll double click on it, and it makes false. All right, so now that we have the VLOOKUP set, you can see that it then looked this up. Let me show you a nice feature here. Under formulas, we have what's called formula auditing, and uh, we can evaluate the formula. And we'll show you how this works here. It's going to look up F4, and I'm going to evaluate it. It says, OK. The value is 6, so I looked up F4, value is 6. And then it's going to evaluate again, and it says 5.76. That was actually quite quick, but what it did is it said find 6 and then return the column 2. Uh, if you ever need to evaluate more complicated formulas, which you might do in this case, um, that's how you do that. So now that we have this formula ri written correctly, I'll put my cursor on the bottom right, double click, and you can see that uh, the seven year returns zero, the three year returns 19.2, and it all works great. Well, now the next challenge is, what about a situation like this? 
this is exhibit two in the case. I'm going to get rid of these rates because uh, we haven't done that yet. What about this situation where you have five-year assets and seven-year assets? The standard V lookup that we had is not going to work because I've hard-coded the column lookup and it will always just keep looking up column two. But some of these assets, as you can see, I need to have it look up column three. And so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a feature called the match function to give me column two when it's a five-year asset and give me column three when it's a seven-year asset. And that's uh, how we're going to use the match. What the match function does is it returns the, uh, the column number starting from left to right um, of this asset that we look up. So if, if I say uh, match five, it'll, it'll try to find five in this range. And it'll count one, didn't find it, count two. Oh, it found it, and it returned two as the column index. So let me show you how that works. So let's go back to the original VLOOKUP. Okay, so we had the original VLOOKUP. We looked up the uh, age of six. We found it in this table array, and I'm going to expand the table array to include this uh, third column now and make it an absolute using the F4 functions. Oops, clicked outside there, sorry. Um, so this is the range. Try one more time. Okay, that's the range. Hit the F4, F4. And then uh, column index, we hard-coded this as two in the last case and we made it an exact match. Well, that's great for the five-year assets, but as I copy that down, you can see it doesn't work for the seven-year asset because the life is 10. And also, this seven-year asset is two-year. It should return 24.49, but it returns 32%. So how do we get this two to be a two when it's a five-year asset, to, but to be a three when it's a seven-year asset? That's what we're going to do the match for. So I'm going to delete this for a second, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Use the match function. You just type equals match. And what do you want to look up? You want to look up the name 5. And the lookup array, you want to find it in this range because this is column 1, 2, 3. And once again, I'm going to make that an absolute reference. And do I want this to be an exact match, uh, less than or greater than? I won't worry about discussing less than or greater than right now. But I want it to be an exact match. I want it to find exactly the word 5 or 7. And so let's choose double click. So as you can see, you know, I will um, make this just a, as a, a single digit there. You can see it returns column 2 for 5-year assets and returns column 3 for 7-year uh, assets. So now what we want to do is we want to put this match formula where we had the former column index in the VLOOKUP. Okay, I'm just going to type that in here, just one second. Okay, so I've returned to the formula before, my VLOOKUP. And this is the issue right here. We need this 2 to be 3 when it's a 7-year asset. And so we're going to replace that with the match function. And what are we going to match? We're going to match the 5. We're going to find the 5 in this range of names. Make sure it's an absolute reference. And then we want it to be an exact match and finish that off. Okay, so it works there and I will double click this down. And you see this time, and we'll come back to this NA here, that's uh, the ISNA that we'll uh, deal with. But if you notice here, um, we did get 24.49. It's a seven year asset, it's third column, and two year life, two, two year age, and we got 24.49. So this, uh, it's now working. Now the reason this turns out to be an NA is because it's 10 years and it tries to find 10 years down here and it goes off the scale and says, hey, it's not available, it's not applicable. Uh, and so we'll have to fix that. So this form is gonna get a little more complicated, but I'm trying to build it up one by one. So all that's happened so far is we have a VLOOKUP and in place of the column index here, we've put a match, which gives me the column that represents the property class. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. Okay, so as you can see, we have a problem when the uh, 
age of the asset does not appear in the lookup table. Uh, this has gone beyond the uh, depreciation life up to 10 years. And what should happen is we should just get a, a, a zero in here. And there should be no depreciation this particular year. So what you can do is you can test, does this lookup formula return a not available? If it does, then we want to make sure we put in a, a zero there. So let me just show you a, a function here. This is called the ISNA. It checks, if you see that, it says checks whether a value is not applicable and returns true or false. So if it is not applicable, as is the case here, what should we get? We should get the word true. But if we copy that formula down one, you can see we're testing this cell, and it turns out to be false. Okay, so if this turns out to be true, that it's NA, then we want to put in a zero. Now, if it turns out to be false, we want it to just do the normal lookup. So here's where the formula is going to get a bit more complicated. Okay. Um, we'll go first here and we'll just do ISNA on all these. Okay, so all I did is I put ISNA, I put it in left parentheses and right parentheses, and I hit enter, and I'll double click that down. Okay, so you see the only one that turned out to be uh, not applicable was row K6. Okay? So uh, when it had a proper value, it turns out false. When it does not have a proper value, it turns out true. Now we're going to move into the next uh, function, which is called the if statement. I'm going to just type if. You can see what this is. The basic syntax is if the test, here's our test, which came up to be true or false. If this test turns out to be true, then do this piece of the formula. If it turns out to be false, then do this piece of the formula. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So if it's true, if the word turns out to be true, we want it to enter a zero. So we're going to have comma and then zero. If it's false, meaning it actually does have a proper value, then we want it to do just a normal lookup. So I'm going to house this formula that we've already done inside of an if statement. So if isna, which is what we just did, turns out to be true, then type zero. Otherwise, just do this whole formula here. V lookup. I copied that and I pasted it. And I have to finish with the right parentheses. And that is your formula. I'm going to bring this down a little bit so you can see that. And I'm going to copy it down. Okay, so let's see if that's true. A uh, five-year asset with six-year age, 5.76, yes. Five-year asset with seven-year age, zero, exactly what we wanted. A seven-year asset, 10-year age, it's off the charts, zero again, it's exactly what we wanted. Five-year asset, three-year age, 19.2. Seven-year asset, two-year age, 24.49. So that is the master formula, but I hope by building this up, you were able to see how it works and uh, I, I think it's really powerful and after I've had to work through this and try to explain it uh, all this makes a whole lot more sense even though at first glance this seems to be a very complicated formula. Alright, so uh, wish you all the best on this and aloha.